Welcome to the Witching Hour. Live from Toronto, worldwide. Hope you're all doing well on this blessed Friday morning. If you're here, you're winning, which means we're all winning. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to this morning's live stream, the Witching Hour live stream. I see eight. I see eight of you here. Welcome eight. How's everybody doing? It's good to see you. Now I see three. We lost five. Wow, it was fast, like a lightning bolt, like a bolt of lightning out of nowhere. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Today, it is on... Where'd you go? Where did you go? On the month of Frederick Mall, we'll be looking at Dante Bra, which means a hug, a warm embrace. I think that's what it means, a warm hug or a warm embrace. So who knows this perfume? How many of you have tried this perfume, Dante Bra? It's it's not one of the more popular ones from Frederick Mall. I think it's probably on the opposite end of the spectrum, considering how strange it is. It is strange. It's it's it feels more of a concept perfume, like conceptually. Conceptually, it's brilliant. I have to say, conceptually, it's friggin' brilliant. I did a meditation today in Dante Bra, and I really do truly believe that perfume does play with our subconscious and our subconscious does play with our dreams and meditations. And I, I did a meditation today, a 20 minute meditation. I did lots of meditations today, but one specific, a 20 minute meditation under a tree with Dante Baron. It was mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. You know, I haven't felt something like that in a long, long time. And I think part of it had to do with the perfume, the fragrance itself, because it was something new to me. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But yeah, I've always thought, like Rich and I are always talking about dreams and subconscious and stuff like that. And I really think, and I don't know how exactly, but I think perfume does play a role in our dreams and our thoughts. Somehow, mysteriously. It's all so somehow mysteriously done, but... Lick the stream if you're here. Everybody, please lick the stream. Dante Bro, what's happening? Bratko. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning from Serbia, the city of Niche. Niche never sleeps. Eh? Niche never sleeps. Niche. Sent to the day, Jean Couturier. 12. Why 12? Love is always in the air. You know it. You know it. <laughs> you know, this, this all there is, is love. There's nothing else here but love. Even if it's nasty. Even if it's nasty, Brandon, it's still love. <laughs> Fragrance enthusiast says, what's your take on Amouage de Fruc Reflection Man? I gotta be honest, it wasn't my favorite um, Amouage. But, but I haven't tried it since my early, early, early days of discovering niche. So I don't know what I would think about it now. I think my tastes have changed since then too. I was looking for really drastic and strange and um, again, more conceptual perfumes. Um, and now it's like I'm looking more for quality instead of like that head banging story. I want something qualitative and well made that still tells a good story instead of sacrifice. I don't want to sacrifice that for a story, and that's what I was looking for mostly before in my early days of perfume was that storytelling without too much concern for quality. So when I came across reflection, I just thought it was, it was nice, but you know, it didn't really, it didn't strike anything inside of me, you know, 
That's what I'm looking for. Strike something inside of me. What's happening, Rizzard? But not every perfume needs to strike something inside of you. you know, that, that's not what I'm saying. It could be a simple perfume, but a lot of people love it for that simplicity. And I have similar things. I have similar simplicities that I love that other people would look at the same way. So. Pradeep, what's happening? Thus spoke Zarathustra. Pradeep, do you want to come on? I'd love for you to come on. And we can talk about whatever the hell you want to call this, Dante Bra. Like, this is some sort of wizard. Like, this is wizardry, man. This is magical shit. This is witchcraft perfume, eh? This is so bonkers conceptually it's i've never really come across anything like this there's nothing out there like this it's really really unique like strangely unique like <laughs> like as as unique as david bowie's music is like when he came out and it was just different from everything if david bowie was a perfumer and he made perfumes i think that this is something he would create you know this is that sort of I got that space oddity vibe from this all day. Just kind of like outer space, meteors, galaxies, cosmic waves, all, you know, anything in outer space. That's, that's kind of the vibe that I was getting from this. It's so cold, eh? It's stone cold. The opening is ice cold. I've never come across a colder fragrance in my life. Ever. There's this is so metallic and sharp and piercing until it's not. Then it, you know, that cashmere comes out and really starts to warm it up. But it's so fucking cold. This perfume, it's cold hearted. This is a cold hearted bitch. Oh, yeah, cold hearted bitch. And she's pointing the mirror. She's picked up the mirror and she's pointing it right at you, eh? Whatever you say is coming right back at you with this perfume. It's a mirror reflection. literally means in your arms hello oris hello everybody patty good morning dushan fragrance enthusiast let us know what you guys are wearing lick the cream lick the cream off the top just a little bit a little bit of cream never hurt anybody morning working again but at least it's friday Every day is Friday, really. I mean, it can be. But enjoy your day. Let us know what you're wearing, drawn by sense. I think Dante Bra is a little wood nymph. Yeah? Is, is that how you see it? Just like a little pecker head? Licked. Thank you for licked. I am pumped. Violet, big powder or no? Thumbs down for the powder. Boo! No, not much powder on me. Not like, all right, you want powder and violet? This is where you go. Heaven can wait. That's got violet and powder. This is violet and powder. Now, this is violet, but not powdery. It's so musky, eh? That's, that's not it. The musk, the musk is so strong. The musk, the musk here is so strange too. Like it, it, it does so many different things. It's pickly and briny and zesty and metallic. It's super sharp. It's piercing. It's aldehydic. There's aldehydes in here. It's 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 got a massive sparkle of light. It's just like you know the Big Bang. That's what it is. That's what I see. is is a huge sparkle. It's just a light show. It 
It's like galaxies colliding. I love that 12. Smells so clean yet complex. Scent of the day, Gentleman's Cologne by Castle Forbes. I like reflection over Juby. Whoa, really? That's interesting. What do all the witches say about that? Reflection over Juby. Babouche, what's happening? Scent of the day, Guerlain Louis. Good to see you, Babouche. I'm glad that you're here. I love the heliotrope and violet open, but it changes too quickly for me. The musk takes over. This 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 is one that really goes in and out, in and out, you, you know, constantly in and out, in and out. Um, hairspray accord. How about that hairspray accord? That's that's kind of like Maurice Roussel's uh, Maurice Maurice Roussel's specialty. We've seen that similar hairspray accord in okay violet and hairspray where are you baby where are you babies let me get my little babies out who's got one of these anyone got one of these i'm sure lots of you guys got one okay there's insolence and that is this is a beautiful violet perfume, but this is more of the sweet, fruity type of violet. There's absolutely nothing sweet in Dante Bra. Zilch, Nilch, Quilch, not Nada. This is much sweeter. This is gorgeous too, but it's got that hairspray accord. And we see it here. It's much more prominent in insolence. Um, here it goes away really, really quick. But it's gorgeous. I love violet. And I think only because it it makes it's like a sad note to me. It's very introspective. Violet takes me inside, probably more so than any other flower, more so than rose, more so than iris. It's it, there's a longing to to violets. You know, they're really deep. And they've got a long pitch to them, and you can you can follow that trail. And it just violets just take me inside. You know, and this is like sparkling, sparkling violet. And it's green in the most oddest way, without being green. Green as in like almost sappy green like pine sap. Yes, for some time, if people are ready to bear my accent. Oh, okay, let me drop the link. Babalush, the mole man. Nick Walker, good to see ya. How's it going? Let us know what you're wearing. Listen carefully, Eugene will teach like the strain for rich Mitch. Thoughts on philosophicals from Detik. It only lasts 20 minutes on my skin. False, 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 false. We don't spread rumors here, Nick Walker. Lasts all day. Um, I don't know. Uh, I it, I get all day performance from it. But you might be getting anosmic to it. There might be some sort of musks in there that are just repetitively, repetitively knocking your... Your, your your nose into oblivion <laughs> that happens um you know if that happens change your change the temperature of your room go outside go outside for a bit for a minute and then come back in and you'll see um if you go from a warm inside conditioned house to a cold outside you should you will definitely be able to tell whether your perfume's still there I get cell grief from the musk. The musk is, so, I get so many things. I get salt. I get salty skin, like salty lover's skin. I get brine. I get something fermenting. It's pickly. It's crazy. It's metallic and stardusty. It's so stardusty. It's so outer spacey. It's so spacey. It's so not Kevin spacey. Puh. But like 
soul spacey. Chris Toff, what's happening? I sampled the EDP. Bobby is a soft soul. That's why he prefers reflection. Possibly. Aha, we have a Hellcat in the house in the form of one and only Pradeep. Everybody say hello. What's happening, Pradeep? Hi, hello, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Really glad to be here. Yeah, I'm. I'm so happy to have you here, man. Good to have you here. Yeah, I've been lurking for the longest time since your uh, day in the life of Gerland, those kinds of videos and so on. Yeah. Uh, yeah how long ago? Uh, how long ago was that? Um, maybe six years or so ago, I think. Uh, yeah, the good, so, the good days. Those were yeah. those were good. Those were good old days. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I watched I watched your own own Vince Vediver unboxing or something like that, and uh, I think you spent uh, like ten minutes unboxing, and I thought, yeah, this guy is uh, someone to watch. <laughs> this guy is special, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Good. How long have you been collecting for? Um, more about... in the hobby or however you want to. I don't know. Collecting might not be the word, but. Uh, no, I've always had a fondness for, you know, like, since, um, you know, uh, my uncles, they used to work abroad, Malaysia, Singapore, and all that. Um, so whenever they come, it, you know, it's kind of kind of an Indian thing, even, uh, that they bring gifts uh, when, you know, when they come home. So usually perfumes, you know, they are part of that. Um, but when I got it was, you know, I used to, of course, uh, sneak some sprays when you know the gifts they bring and so on um but really i would say when uh, i really came to france um in india of course you have other orders you know your sandalwoods your florals and all that of course i was familiar with those but really the kind of perfumes that we know now and what we talk about here you know the videos and so on that's more so really when i came to france because uh, economically that's a big constraint right so you can't imagine buying, you know, going out and buying a Dior or Chanel in India. It, it's like a month's salary for people over there. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I would say really it kickstarted when I came to France, basically. Yeah. All right. And you just, how did your taste develop over time? Where did it start? And how did you get to where you are right now in this place? Like, how did you end up ultimately in this live stream today? Like what? What kind of set you down that road? Where did this start for you? Uh, so first, I think yeah, uh, like, I think hmm. yeah, sorry. Uh, so first, yeah, I think I was again trying to do what my family usually does. So I was looking for gifts for my people, you know, like for my mother, my father, and so on. When I was going back after, uh, you know, from France to India, so I was looking again for something to buy them um so, you know i used to go and browse uh, you know perfumes and all that uh, of course i started with some designers you know mont blanc armani aqua di Gion, and all that ah, stuff okay. um so um, how after long, that I, how, how yeah, long were you into designers for maybe a couple of years i would say um of course, I, I I genuinely like them, so I wouldn't like. Uh, so I genuinely like those scents. Of course, when I when I started. And how did you uh, get interested in like more interesting perfumes? How did that come up for you? Like, what did you first notice, and what what drove you to seek out, like, continue into this hobby and and seek out like more interesting niche perfumes? Um. So I think I um, I, I just felt. You know, started to get some sense of um, emptiness, I would say. I mean, they weren't engaging as much, you know, with time. Uh, you know, I, I used to wear, you know, Blue de Chanel, Aqua de Jeu Profumo, and, and all those scents, right? So after some time, there was some sort of sort of disconnect, I would say. Um, it, felt, it felt more like, you know, like functional and uh, nothing I can uh, be engaged with throughout the day. Um, and uh, that's when I started to go look at you know your um uh Libre de Orange and Serge Luton and uh, you know Tom Ford private blend which was like like really at the 
you know, like it was really hyped at the time when I when I was uh, looking into perfumes. Uh, you know, so I tried your tobacco wood, your your wood wood even. Um, I I had smelled wood in India, but nothing like this. You know, where it's more modern and you know, kind of that thirties. You know, for some reason it really talks to me that you know, kind of twenties and thirties. You know, when you're like you know, when you're getting into your business or you know, you want to get you know, feel smart or whatever <laughs> it could be anything. Uh, so those are the kind of scents that I've you know, kind of browsing around and. Uh, uh, it's a particular scent. I, I mean, I wouldn't say there's a particular scent which particularly you know, got me hooked. But uh, yeah, it's it's those um, Serge Luton, you know, Goudals and uh, Etat Libre d'Orange. Those are the kind of brands I think that uh, really kind of pushed me to the to the niche side of things. And of course, yeah, I tried uh, the Designer Exclusives as well. So um, Coromandel, I think it's it's an important fragrance for me um, because. The name caught me. I think uh, I said it a few times in the comments that Coromandel is actually a place in India as well. So they traded those Chinese lacquers through that coast. So that's where it got the name. The lacquers got the name. And the lacquers is where the perfume got the name. So it's kind of like a three-step process. So the Coromandel, the name caught to me and I went and smelled the perfume and so on. So yeah, there are multiple um, you know, houses and brands like this that... Uh, uh, yeah, really kind of pushed me, and I would say <laughs> this rabbit hole. <laughs> How did you find Chanel? Like, what were your discoveries with Chanel? How did you come to find them and love them? Uh, Chanel, I think the first one, yeah, it's uh, it was blue, the Chanel, so yeah, that, that's the first one I you know I bought, uh, really in the in the beginning, so that's the one I was wearing. Um, then I think I was looking for green green fragrances, and uh, I I really liked the green profile. You know, the idea of a green scent. Uh, mm-hmm. But I those that I found in the in the in the men's section where I don't know, I just felt they were you know, like too mature or something that I couldn't pull off. You know, your polo greens and so on. Um, then I think. Okay, let's go and browse the women's section, <laughs> uh, which, of course, you know, even in France, still today you have, you know, parfum masculin and parfum féminin. They are separate. Uh, you know, the essays kind of direct you to that section. <laughs> but uh, then I think I discovered Channel 19, um, which uh, which I really liked, and which in, in parts, you know, kind of made me more open to wearing, you know, perfumes marketed towards women as well. Um, and uh, another thing I would say is Diorom, uh, Diorom because of that iris powdery uh, thing. Mm. The connection being, of course, I think you have you have talked about it many times that it feels like a Chanel, Chanel fragrance. Yeah. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would have to agree. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, it feels like a Chanel fragrance. So what I and it opened me to iris, and then I was looking. Okay. What are the scents that really, you know, emphasize iris and you know, do different combinations on the theme of iris and so on? Uh, that led me to the, the exclusives, um, external exclusives. Um, so that that's when I spotted Coromandel and started liking it, and uh, then found uh, I think it was La Pausa and uh, 22 and uh, 1957 later, and uh, all those scents, Bordesil, Cure de Roussy for leather, and, and, and so on. So that's where it uh, kind of led me to those uh, Chanel perfumes. Where do you stand with Le Leon? Ah, I really, really like Le Leon, yeah. So um, um, I was kind of expecting something like that for a long time because in the middle, uh, for a few years, I felt that they you know, kind of really went all uh, soft and plush uh, with the releases in you know, 1957. I think there was Boy. Um, but you know, are you a fan, you a fan that, of either of those? Yeah, yeah, I do like them, but you know, I wanted something, you know, something more, something mm. you know, big, grand, and, and kind of opulent. Let's say. Um, you didn't so think I they did were like, enough? I, I did like them, but I think they felt a bit more personal to me. You know, nineteen fifty-seven. It's kind of like a skin scent, you know, must personal. Yeah, personal. yeah, yeah. I think they, yeah, they did feel a little bit more personal. Exactly. Yeah. Which I mm-hmm. like, yeah. Which I like, I do like. Um, 
But uh, yeah, Chanel, Chanel, they don't do grand perfumes that often, at least in the recent years, right? So. I think all of their perfumes are very personal, though, especially in the exclusives. Yeah. Even Le yeah. Leon is, I mean, as bold and outrageous as the opening is, you know, in the dry down, it, 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 it feels sort of personal. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that, yeah. And uh, it's it's not a bombastic it's it's bombastic mm. for Chanel, but it's not bombastic in general. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, th that's pretty much it. It's it's Chanel's take on such a theme. That's what I mean. So if you compare that to I don't know your your big you know, bombastic ambers, it's uh, it's not it will be not that grand, let's say. Uh, but Chanel's take on that kind of a theme is something that I kind of was looking for. Uh, you know, I think the last one they did was probably, uh, I guess, Coromandel. I think they didn't do much heavy perfumes after that. I mean, Coromandel, is, it's very personal, but again, in Chanel's side of things, I felt that that was the, la the last kind of grand, epic uh, kind of scent. Um, and uh, so, so, yeah, Lilio, I really liked. Um, like that, you know, it has that that little bit of animalic, that kind of edge to it. Um, that makes it yeah, more interesting. It is quite edgy. Yeah, that golden glow that, that has this kind of sheen to it. You know, it's not your dry like amber. It's kind of an amber. It has the sheen to it. Um, feels kind of grand and kind of you know you you feel like like opening your hands, right? Like like epic sort of a perfume. So I really liked it. Yeah. It is quite epic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ah, here it is. I, it's super sandy. Do you find it sandy and like gritty? Yeah, definitely. There's some sort of sort of texture to it. Like you can can feel that something is like dry and kind of almost. I feel burning. like I've got a handful of sand and I can rub it like this. And it's exfoliating my my skin. Yeah, it definitely has that sort of sensation, like very like, like like sunlight beaming on something like dry, sort of a that sort of a thing is there in that for sure. Yeah. And how'd you come to discover Frederick Mull? Uh, I think it's main. It mainly started with uh, my search for my first niece fragrance. <laughs> How long ago? Um, that was maybe like uh, seven, eight days ago now. Um, in Paris? Yeah. So in I had a uh, few candidates in a few houses. You know, I was looking at uh, Eldon, Serge Luton, Goutal, and uh, yeah, Creed and Parfum de Marly as well. <laughs> uh, and of course, there was Frederick Mall. And uh, like every everyone that uh, gets into Frederick Mall, I, you know, just first of all, I just went and smelled. Portrait of Valeria and, and Mascara Vajou. Um I were was student back. Yeah, were those your first discoveries? Yeah, I, I smelled both of those first. Obviously, that's what you know. That's what people talk about, and that's what gets pushed. Uh, so those two were the ones I I first uh, smelled. And uh, yeah, I didn't buy either of them in the in the beginning because, like, Portrait of Valeria, it, it felt like telling me I was poor. <laughs> Uh, it was so opulent. It was like you know, someone at the Versailles Palace would wear, or you know, someone like a something or, strikingly yeah. beautiful, right? Exactly. It didn't feel like something that you know, something someone like normal like me could wear at the time. I was like a student in in Paris, so I didn't buy there. And Masquerade for some reason that I don't know, it felt maybe animalic or something I wouldn't really wear outside, you know, for some reason. So I didn't buy that either. Um, but then I, I came back to it because of uh, Miss You in, in 2015, I think. Um, and, and that's when it, it really caught me. So Miss You, even though it, it's bold and it's 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 butch and it's, it's strong, there is some, I wouldn't say mass appeal, but there is this kind of aspirational quality to it, you know, like, like a mature man, kind of a boss man, kind of a vibe to it. In Monsieur? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that uh, you know, when you're first getting into niche, you know that you know the Frederick. I, I would say it's more of one of the more like palatable uh, Frederick malls. I would say. Um, if really? You are, if you are, no, Monster? if you're young and no, if you're young and if you're looking for something big and bold and yeah, 
little more appealing you know that that's kind of what uh, is appealing right so for a guy i mean so um that's what that's what i think really kind of turned me in so then i started going back through the other perfumes in the in the catalog um then step by step you know i got liking you know one by one i think i i didn't like the en passant um then you did or the, didn't i did i did yeah okay i found that and i like that one then i think it was uh, dries van norton i like that one yeah um, so one by one it start, got, kind of let me in and uh, then i th there was no feminine labels in frederick mall right so that also made me more comfortable to you know go you know discover le mediterrane or uh, uh, eau de magnolia and those kind of perfumes as well which would some would say it's you know more feminine side but that also kind of helped me kind of break the barrier uh, with no labels or no particular marketing per se um that's why I, i kind of started going one by one and that's how i kind of accumulated more perfumes from uh, from frederick yeah. yeah how many do you own from frederick mall are you like me like you have to have all of them or are you just buy the ones that you love to wear i actually do have everything <laughs> why is that is it like a respect for frederick mall or is it because you love them why why do you feel it why do you have all of them um i would say it's for multitude of uh, reasons first um, first obviously i think i um i like him i mean not more than the brand i would say so i like frederick i respect him so that is there um second i, I generally like the fragrances you know i, I take my time with them i, I don't just um, Uh, kind of blind by or you know just for completionist mindset they, I, i don't know that they don't feel like the type of fragrances you just smell and blow through you really exactly. need to spend time and appreciate them to understand them exactly so uh, i usually spend you know somewhere like at least two months with each of those scents before kind of assuring that you know dropping this kind of money is, is you know it's worth it or you know i would rather spend it on something else um so that is there and uh, third is um uh, just as uh, yeah this may be a flawed um retrospective but i think it's i think it's interesting to follow uh, someone artistic from from start to end if if you know what i mean yeah so, for sure yeah it's like so, it's like following your favorite music band exactly exactly so you may not like a couple of their songs couple of their albums it's totally fine you you accept that uh but it allows you to you know see from you know what where they started and where they are going and what they are doing and it gives you it, it lets you understand as a whole the uh, you know the whole package so to the speak story the whole, journey, the whole story exactly uh which 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 you could do with any house for that matter but the other final reason i would say that fits uh, in that category is because of the number of perfumes that they have um like your uh, like your line you couldn't do that the or you couldn't do that you know they have hundreds of fragrances um i think with mall you have you know 34 or 35 fragrances now so it lets you know it's practically possible to you know have all of them yes. to, you know to understand them so yes um yeah so i think all those factors um uh, let me uh, to kind of you know okay. get in the south basically so you you own all of them does that mean that you love all of them like do you love and adore each and every single one no that that that's just impossible i think, I think no one can love everything so. right 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 um i do have like outrageous i'm, I'm not a fan uh, so um, i think what, else, what are some also, other ones that you don't enjoy angelique sur le pluie i I feel a little bit a uh, little bit down uh, <laughs> in so, terms of what what is it about the perfume um performance performance is is part of it but i think it's um i, I yeah performance main part of it i would say because i can't even smell it after some time uh, so that's part of it um second being that it uh, it doesn't engage me per se um so you know I, i smell it right so you smell it uh, for the first 10 minutes and i kind of you know kind of tapers out uh, for me in terms of engagement um it feels like i'm you know 
I'm starting to go somewhere for, in a car or something, and then I just stopped uh, in 10 minutes or something. That's kind of how it makes me feel sometimes. <laughs> a short trip, <laughs> a short yeah, journey. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, I, I find it rather beautiful, but um, it, I do agree. It, it is quite soft. What yeah. is there any others that you don't enjoy? Um, outrages, I'm not a fan of. Uh, maybe right. even the time that came out, maybe the Umbrox and Apple thing was an innovation. Mm. Uh, but now when you when you wear it, I yeah. I just, where do you it, where where do you stand with Uncut Gem? Um, Uncut Gem, I, I don't hate it. Um, I don't hate it like you know some people they just completely hate it so not on that uh, that side um i think it's underwhelming uh, a bit underwhelming for sure um, i think they would they could have done something more with the amber because that's what it was um, kind of uh, focusing on the amber accord um and them focusing it fully on that ambrosinide that uh, yeah that kind of rubbed me the wrong way uh, they could have tried an amber gris or um, um, maybe just went with the traditional amber or, or or I think even with the ambrosinite, I think the proportions could have been even with whatever they have as of now in that perfume, I think. Just maybe changing up those proportions would have made it better, I think, um, even with the ambrosinite. Of course, if you don't like synthetics at all, then you're not going to like it, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm I'm a little bit more open to you know like synthetic like molecular kind of sense um, you know even even Dante Bra I think kind of fits into that category um, so so yeah I don't hate it so I, I'm a bit bit underwhelmed especially when you compare it to synthetic jungle and heaven can wait and music for a while you know more of his new releases I think it uh, it it, uh, it kind of steps back a bit in terms of uh, appealing to me. I'm I'm a big fan of the the past you know five six releases. How do you feel about them? You feel um, you feel like Frederick's on a good plane right now. Yeah, I, I'm also. I mean, I, I've been a fan as well of the uh, latest releases. I mean, Heaven Can't Wait. I uh, I really liked, um, and I totally get that people say you know it's maybe the carnation clothing is an old kind of a percent profile and. Maybe it doesn't last and so on. I totally get that. Um, but but I feel that, again, Heaven Can Wait, for instance, I think it's kind of, it feels like him kind of going back uh, like to his, you know, your uh, bigger art days and your uh, en passant days and your Angelique Sulapluy days and so on. Bro, I think he crushed it with Heaven Can Wait. Like, crushed it. Yeah, yeah I think it's a, it's really beautiful, uh, beautiful composition. In fact, I think it's, it's a new... Uh, from Jean Claude Elena's side as well. I mean, it, it's a, it's a new area. Crushed it. He crushed it. He Absolutely gorgeous. Exactly. He he keeps pushing. He hasn't done a perfume like this before, and into his seventies, attempting like something like this and taking a risk like this, which won't sell much, I'm sure. Uh, I think that that's a that's a bold move, uh, and that's why that's why I don't understand uh, when some people say you know, Frederick Mall is going to more designer side more mass appealing side th that no, i really don't understand <laughs> no i i don't believe that for a moment not after you know no i think it's absolutely gorgeous are you excited for uh, acne acne what is acne studios acne studios i think it's called yeah you excited for that um, uh, I am curious, yeah, maybe not as that excited uh, now because we don't have, I think, more information about it. Uh, we don't know who's the perfumer, mostly. Um, Do we know who the perfumer is? At least I don't know who the who the perfumer is. Uh, I don't know either. Yeah. It looks like a soft kind of uh, rosy floral perfume. Like I, saw, I think I saw rose. Rose and violet as well. Rose, violet, sandalwood. Aldiart. Yeah. It looks more like that lipstick rose oh, kind of all right. profile. Yeah. yeah. Joey, I don't know. Joey's asking, I want to ask, have you seen the videos of Toronto accents? I don't know what that is, Joey. Can you can you explain a little bit more? But all right. So tell us I asked like which ones you don't enjoy. Now tell us what are you some of your favorites? 
tell what which, what are what are some of the Frederick malls you wear the most of? Um, Dante Bry is one of my most fun. In fact, I'd say yeah. Uh, so that's there. Noir piece I really like. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, even Carnal Flower, Carnal Flower, I, I do wear. Um, French Lover, French Lover, I do enjoy. Um, Carnal Flower, yeah, yeah, I enjoy all of those. And um, what else? Even en passant, I really like Lodivé. Lodivé, I, I adore Lodivé from Jean Cordelina as well. Um, so yeah, those, those are some of my favorites. And some some I do like, but I don't wear often because I just feel that they are just so grand and so dressy and uh, like which really screaming. Iris yeah. Pudra? Yeah, like Iris Pudra. I really like it, um, but I don't wear it uh, that often. I just feel, I feel like, the same way. It's it's very dressy. Yeah. It's very dressy. It's very formal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very formal. It, it really feels like a. You know, it's like a, a big personality. Guy. Yeah. Big personality. Um, Christoph is asking what you think of uh, Frederick Mull modernizing the Estee Lauder classics. Um. I think it's it's more Estelle Lauder's um, um, attempt at maybe appealing to a new audience. Um, plus, it, I think it's also Frederick Maul's interest because I think I saw an interview where he said, as soon as he sold the brand, I think that was the first question he asked whether he can modernize those things. He was really interested in the, um, like private collection. I think it's one of his favorite perfumes ever, uh, things like that. Um, yeah, I, I think it's um, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I think I yeah I'll reserve maybe my judgments until I smell the actual scents. Um, and I, I have not been a fan of Estelle Lauder as well. I don't know if that uh, if that counts. Uh, maybe I I just managed to smell the classic. Uh, I mean the recent formulation. So maybe uh, that 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 also plays into that. But. From what I've smelled, I have not been the greatest fan of the the Estee Lauder perfumes, the recent formulations at least. Yeah, are they too um, classic for you? Yeah, they're they're too classic. Sometimes they even come across like a bit cheap uh, for the recent formulations. Uh, sometimes it's just too heady and too vintagey, like you know, like Grand Dame kind of uh, perfumes is how I feel. Yeah, very green and aldehydic. I know what you mean. Yeah, so yeah, I, I would check them out uh, because it's uh, you know they are consulting Frederick and so on. But yeah, I would have to smell them to to give a more, I guess, clear judgment. All right, let's let's get into let's get into Dante Bra a little bit. You seem like you seem to be really ecstatic about it in in yesterday's chat. I think you said it was one of your favorite Frederick Moles, right? Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. For sure. What what do you love about it? Um, I like how abstract it is. Like I think you were uh, you were kind of in a good way struggling to give a description to it, right? I, I like I like that. Yeah, I like that ambiguity. You know, right? It, it's it's not saying straight to your face, right? It's uh, um, it's, it's uh, yeah. Very conceptual. Yeah, it's not underlying. I know underlining every emotions and uh, saying, yeah, this is how you should feel. This is the note. Yeah, this is what you you get out of it. It's not saying anything like that. Um, mm. So I like that ambiguous nature uh, that it has. Plus the um, um, even the the range of um, the range of emotions that uh, that it has. You know, like they say that it's uh, it's. Uh, it's an embrace, but you know, sometimes it smells like a baby. You know, like a there's this sort of innocence to it. Sometimes okay. it's, it smells a bit sexual. You know, like like a lover, you know, like you're hugging your lover, something like that. Like skin, exactly. Like like a creamy lotion, like salty. You know, something like uh, it has this kind of frame within a frame kind of uh, you know that image to it. I I don't know how that comes, but. You know, like like you have some pine forest, you know, with some misty uh, background, and you have kind of like a window frame, 
or you have kind of two people hugging in there. That's kind of the picture I'm I'm getting every time I wear it. So um, that 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 range is I find quite intriguing. That kind of it could be a baby, it could be a lover, it could be a mother, it could be a teacher, um, and it and it has that kind of something spilling out from your your you know when you're hugging someone you know like that warmth you know when the skin of both people like sort of come together mm-hmm. you know, it, it starts out cold right in the opening you have your it's violets cold. Yeah, you have your violets your iris uh not iris sorry ambered glow kind of a vibe you know it starts cold a bit cold Alde- aldehydes, aldehydes got well. exactly yeah maybe some ambered also i think it, it starts out cold when uh um almost like you know it reminded me of something you know you you start early in the morning you drive somewhere you meet someone in living in the top of a hill where it's very cold and you know you are in your empty stomach your senses are very heightened you go meet them and you give them a hug and you know that kind of cold slightly come to comes to a clash you know with that skin that salty skin and then it starts to warm up step by step um Cashmere. Cashmere comes in, and then you have your sandalwood, and then you have your heliotrope, that kind of fluffy, cloudy, billowy quality that starts to come in. And then it becomes more and more warm, right? So, yeah, and the colors also, initially, it's this gray kind of dark, kind of uh, violety kind of a hue in the in the beginning. And then you, it starts, yeah. Do you get hairspray? Yeah, that's what I, I get. That kind of spillage, kind of something like spilling out of a body, kind of you know, like pressurized, kind of a push, kind of a image for sure. Yeah, something that is pressurized and coming out. That that image I'm getting for sure. Yeah. Do you get green? Um, in the dry down, in the dry down, yes. Later, later in the dry down, there is something a bit green in there, like maybe from. Some of the facets of the heliotrope, maybe, but uh, in the beginning, it, it, it's this kind of gray, uh, kind of um, uh, misty, uh, slightly violety, candied, uh, clovey, that kind of uh, dark image is what I'm, I'm kind of getting. It, it feels fermenting. Like in the opening, it has this fermenting accord to, to me. Yeah, it has this kind of hay. hay There's got to be rose in here as well. Like a fermenting rose, mm. rose and violets. There's something <laughs> super sparkling in here, very do sharp. That, do you get that sort of um, old bubble gum kind of vibe, like like a vintage bubble gum? Not your not your sweet bubble gum, but that vintage kind of rice flower bubble gum. You know, that chalky, slightly chalky <sighs> one. <laughs> It's raspy. Yeah, yeah. Very raspy. I don't get bubble gum. I don't get bubble gum. I don't There's get anything sweet. sweet. I don't have I don't get anything sweet from this. All right. Because for me in the beginning there seems to be some sweetness, maybe from the violet and it feels like dry oh, gin, like juniper. Yeah, that that vibe juniper. is definitely. And I see that kind of in Chanel's number 18. I get a connection there with that juniper, kind of that gin and tonic accord. I'm getting a bit of that sort of wet cement, sort of mushroomy kind of vibe as well. The- mushroomy. Carl Anderson said mushroomy. He's like, do you get mushrooms from it? Um, I don't get anything fungal. I, I, I don't get mushrooms. It, I kind of wish it's I did. Clean, right? it, it's very clean, so um, so when it's a mushroom, I, I don't think it's an earthy mushroom. It's just this sort of clean, kind of champagne cart like that kind of vibe. It's clean, but the musk can be dirty. The musk goes into these kind of salty territories. The musk goes into these interesting places. It is clean, but it has this. Slightly through, <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have said what. That's that's why that's why I think it's interesting, right? So it's it's even tough to describe. I, I don't think anyone can 
completely describe it. So uh, even the perfumers, even, even Maurice Roussel was struggling to explain what it is. So that is what I find kind of fascinating uh, about it. So. About what? That that kind of tendency to not to be able to explain it, like what it is exactly. Uh, I, I find that, you know, that ambiguous, that sort of um, abstract creations, I, I find them uh, interesting. And uh, I think, I think, yeah, maybe if, yeah, maybe this is <laughs> this is going into it a bit, but it's it's a very French house, right? So uh, uh, Frederick Moore is a very French house. So that the naming that has a lot of significance, uh, I feel so. Uh, Dante Bra, you know, you have a lot of literature, novels, movies, songs, whatever. So you, you have lots of. Um, artistic connotations to that name, um, Dante Bra. And um, I also, and this is completely my guess, I think it could be also a take on this theme that French perfumers, you know, uh, not your your normal French perfumers, you know, who pitch everything as a sensual and sexy and so on, um, mm -hmm. but some sophisticated perfumers. If um, I think I read some articles and seen some interviews where they mentioned that they try to capture the idea of uh, fleur de peau, no, not diptych fleur de peau, but uh, this idea of fleur de peau, uh, which means it doesn't have a single meaning, that, that concept. It has your um, um, sensitivity of the skin, so that's that's the literal meaning, or just something on the edge, right, when you're trying to push a person to the, to the edge. That they that they react to it, you know, uh, through the skin where everything inside is visible on the outside. Uh, that something that they call as fleur de peau, you know, um, uh, what that that flowers are showing outside kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a very French expression. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's maybe difficult to difficult to translate translate it completely. But um, I feel that it's it's a take on that theme as well. So. Um, it brings together that kind of skin colliding kind of an idea, um, and a per person's kind of like you said, like a mirror um, showing what's inside on the outside kind of a thing. Um, so that idea also is something that that I, that I find interesting. So um, they haven't come out and said it. So you know, um, when they when perfumers do this sort of musky, ambered perfumes, you know that. Um, uh, soapy, um, laundry kind of a clean perfumes with with a bit of that kind of sweaty, clean skin vibe. This uh, has that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that laundered yeah. detergent sort of musk. So those kind of times, I mean, those kind of occasions, I've seen them describing it as, uh, you know, like fleur de peau, that it's an expression of fleur de peau. So I think that that this one is kind of uh, a take on that expression uh, from Frederick Mall as well, in a way. Um, so yeah, that's why I uh, find it interesting. And, and Kashmir as well, yeah, I know it's uh, it's a synthetic, so there's an aversion towards uh, synthetics. But the way that it's worked in here is also uh, something that I, I find really interesting because um, Kashmir, I think, um, I've experienced most of in incense perfumes. Like if you've smelled the Cardinal from Hili or uh, Rêve d'Ocean, uh, those are some incense perfumes. Uh, Rêve d'Ocean from Oriza Le Grand. Um, what they do is they use this cashmere on to give that creaminess to the incense. You know, the incense has a bit of that creamy, goopy quality, not like lactonic milky, but incense, um, a frank incense has a bit of that sort of liquidy oily quality right so they use cashmere on to do that accord to give incense that sort of oily character um so here i think they kind of pushed it to the to the front um to uh, uh to really push that synthetic accord to, in all its glory um and i think i find that interesting as well yeah that that decision even to do that i think it's really a risk and and I think they managed to do a, a very interesting composition out of that. Yeah, the cashmere adds some warmth under that ice cold opening. And then once that opening kind of clears the way, that's when the cashmere kind of shows up and, and 
and reveals itself. But it is. This is a very bold release, I think. This is very different. And I can see this being a very divisive perfume, not loved by everybody. But the people that do love it are madly in love with it. And the others are... I don't think there's middle ground here. It's a very strange yeah. in that way. Yeah, I don't you even know. see that in in some of their boutiques. You have you have to order it online or something like that. So here, if you go, you you don't even see it in many of uh, Frederick Malt stands. You don't see this. You don't see uh, Fleur de Cassis. Um, Fleur de Cassis. So yes. Yeah. I think you know conceptually. I I think this is brilliant. I I really 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 enjoy it for wearing for for that purpose conceptually, but. Like personally, this isn't something that I feel would call me very often, and it doesn't. It mm -hmm. hasn't, you know. For me, it's 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 way too cold for me. Um, yeah, I I enjoy this more for the concept than yeah, because I then I love wearing it than actually love wearing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I love the warmth of Heaven Can Wait. I love the use of violet there. I love the powderiness. I think that's kind of what I'm missing here. Uh, not enough powder, too cold, too sharp, <laughs> and very conceptual, you know? Yeah. Very conceptual, but... Yeah, I think it has that accessory-like quality uh, in, in a good way, right? So... I think that's maybe another reason I I like it. Um, in that it it's not so opulent like you know like Portrait of a Lady that you only wear to special occasions. I think this one you can just uh, you know reading a book or you know, watching a TV you can wear this and still kind of enjoy it. Do you um, do you get any reactions from wearing this from other people? Like what how what other people think of this smelling it on you, or have you smelled it on anyone else? And what did you think? Uh, I've heard comments like, you know, it smells clean or, uh, you know, you, you clean. Ah, you the musk. Fresh. Yeah, you smell fresh and so on. Uh, but I think people most of the times don't even associate it with uh, with the perfume, right? I, I think they feel that it's it's whatever soap or whatever products you have used and uh, whatever clothes, you know, you, you're wearing your laundered clothes, whatever. I think they associated with that smell and they don't look at it as a perfume per se i think um I, so yeah i think that also is one of the reasons so i think they associated with the smell of a person rather than you know you're, you're wearing a perfume per se you know your perfume smells good uh you just that you know you smell clean or you, you, want, you smell fresh Th those are the kind of comments that i i have seen and uh, that's how it comes across to me so um um uh, it's not like you know how you smell of roses, you smell of uh, jasmine, and so on. Right, right, um, right. So th yeah, that also I think is an interesting aspect of uh, of this. Yeah, and but I totally also get what you mean. And uh, when it, when you said it doesn't uh, call you emotionally, and, and that's totally totally, uh, um, I think uh, applicable here because it's um, it's a very cold perfume. So it's and, very uh, cold. Yeah. It's an interesting it direction. Very interesting direction. Yeah. I wonder if they, they actually got what they were looking for. From what I heard, this was um, very kind of almost micromanaged by, by Frederick Moll, more than Roussel. Uh, that's what I have heard in, in the interviews and articles and so on that uh, it was really his idea. He wanted to do something with Kashmir on he called up Maurice Roussel and uh, um and I think must part came from Maurice Roussel that's it's, how they it's came mostly around. you know it's it's violet musk uh pine and cashmere mostly like that's that's mostly what what I get but then I get a ton of like nuances mm. of these little things playing on the side you know It's super complex, like extremely complex yeah. and deep and interesting. The way it, 
the way it wears also, I, I, I think, find quite uh, quite interesting. Even the, the way it wears is different. It's so exactly. completely. I've never felt with any perfume like that. It it, it, it is very stable, right? It, it's it's so like ghostly. That. It's extremely yeah, exactly. ghostly. Exactly. If I ever wanted an ideal perfume to be created, I think the kind of performance would be something like this. That's how I, that's how I feel. So it's not too much. It's it's kind of moderate, and it lasts throughout the day. And it kind of like you said, like ghostly. It comes back and it comes to the front and goes back and so on. And uh, that also, I think, is sort of the ideal um, a wearing experience, irrespective of the smell. I, I mean that if something wears like this, I think that that for me is the sweet spot. I would say that the kind of wearing the perfume gives that. I think it's the way it performs, the way it projects, and the way it uh, you you perceive it. I, I think it's um, yeah, it's one of the best in that class from from what I've smelled. I think, irrespective of the smell, even so. You like the way this performs? Yeah, I like the way it, it, it comes back. It's kind of stable. It doesn't overwhelm you, but you you keep smelling it. You you can perceive it. It's not completely lost anywhere. Um, and it and it and it feels like you said, like ghostly, right? It it feels like a second skin, and it uh, um, uh, when you sit down, you can. You can kind of meditate on it almost like um, you can you can you can do your work or whatever you're doing you know and you can still enjoy this it doesn't distract you um, uh, you know so, some fragrances I feel like I just need to wear them and sit in calmness right uh, you can't do anything right you you feel like they they are asking for your engagement right uh, like portrait of lady I, I like to keep my head clean whenever I wear that I don't want to Wear portrait of lady and going to a conference call or something. Um, right, 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 right. Yeah, this one feels like that. This one I can wear and still do my work, and it, it's still there to keep me company. So it won't, think, yeah, it won't yeah. distract you. Yeah, that that I find really uh, interesting about that as well. Yeah. CK says, "I heard what you guys are talking about. Pulled it up on Fragrantica. One of their cons say some may find it too creepy or uninviting." creepy <laughs> do you find anything creepy about it no i not at all in fact yeah it's um, it's it's rather inviting i would say i mean i don't see it as creepy do you, you find it inviting um inviting in the in the later part in, in the first part it is cold when um, you start it, it, it it's cold and it's got of it's got that distance kind of way uh, yeah. i don't find it inviting at all yeah, for me, in the like five hours or so down the wearing, I find that it starts to warm up and it starts to become kind of more uh, like almost like white and bright for me. Like very later in the first five hours, it's it's gloomy, it's almost sad and melancholic. It, yeah, it's not inviting at all. I I find that change. I also that that's also something that I that I find really interesting that. After five hours, that it's still changing and it's you know it's it's evoking a different emotion, right? Um, right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, in the, in the, if someone sprays it at the boutique, right? When when they spray it, they might just think that I you know this one makes me want to cry or something. You know, it's not inviting at all in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Mimi says hi everyone. I'm catching this live on the bus here in Hong Kong. Scent of the day, Frederick Mall Synthetic Jungle. Hi, the Mimi. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Um, love synthetic jungle. Pradeep, what do you think about synthetic jungle? Oh, synthetic jungle, I, I really liked. Yeah. Um, again, green perfumes. I don't know why so many people hate green perfumes. Uh, it's really something I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was, um, again, sort of a throwback to. Um, to the work by Mall, like he went back to green perfumes after some time. That's a that's something I really look forward to, and I really liked it. The the basil, the sort of lily of the valley accord in there. Uh, I think the black current note. I think in the in the beginning. Um, yeah, I I like that it has like clear contours, like it's not textured like in you know, like in French lover, for instance. 
um, even it has those it does have those green uh, you can feel the the stems and the roots and, and all that but it still has those clear contours like clean almost like a greenhouse effect uh, in that perfume that that, I, that yeah that i really liked yeah yeah i really enjoyed that as well um Bobby says, is it a good date scent for Paris <laughs> evening? You said it's good for hugging. I mean, if you enjoy it, Bobby, it can be anything you want it to yeah. be. <laughs> that's that's all that's important. I don't know. For me personally, I wouldn't wear this on a date. I would wear Heaven Can Wait on a date. I wouldn't go for uh, a Dante bra. It's a sad hug. Or says it feels like, does that mean it feels like a sad hug? Does the musk, you've, you've smelled Iris Pudre. Do you get a connection between uh, the musk and Iris Pudre and the musk used here? Like it has that kind of dirtiness to it? Yeah, it I think so, yeah. I think um, the aldehydic musky, yeah, of yeah. course. Aldehydes as well, yeah. And I think they both have um, jasmine as well. Uh, I think the way that they integrate jasmine, uh, that I think uh, maybe some similarities. And um, there's some coldness from the incense as well in, in Dante Brasso. I mean, it's it's not like perceivably incense when you you, do, you don't say it's incense in there, but uh, it's um, it's just giving that coldness to it. I, I feel it's Such not perceivably frank incense. Yeah, it's so bizarre. It's very metallic. Do you get metallic? Um, it's very not not. Pinchy. Yeah, not in a screechy kind of irritating way, but yeah, there is a metallic aspect in there. Yeah. Like almost like wool, right? Like like wool has that that fabric has a bit of that metallic character, right? That that's how I feel here. Like scrubbing From, wool? No, no, wool wool jacket, uh, luxurious uh, coat or something like that. Um, even the cashmere, I think that that's how it got the the name. Uh, the ingredient, the cashmere fiber, the the fabric. Um, yeah, that that sort of metallic vibe for sure. I'm not getting ambroxan kind of metallic vibe. That, that is that that's not what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be my first choice, but I don't think it's a bad fragrance for a date or anything. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it just kind of lacks that warmth and intimacy. I, I don't get that from this. Uh, um, even though, like, that is the concept, isn't it? That is the whole idea, is a warm embrace. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it comes very late for me. Even for me, I was like, yeah, is this a hug? I mean, it's just uh, sad. It feels almost sad in the beginning. That's what I thought. <laughs> Does does Violet do that? Does Violet strike some sadness into anyone else, or am I alone here? Like Violet has this yeah, feeling of longing yeah. for me. Violet heliotrope um, with aldehydes, iris. I think that's uh, that's just uh, yeah, episode of sadness. <laughs> Listen, it's it's a great perfume. I'll say it. It is a great perfume. It is remarkable the way it does what it does and it does what it does very unique um just like you said even the way it performs and and shows itself and and allows it allows us to look at it you know when it's ready and it's yeah. not always only when it says okay here i am that's when it, it shows up so the way it does that is really fancy the way it smells it's it's very, very, very unique, you know. I can enjoy it for that, but 
it, and it's pushing boundaries too. It's it's pushing these really strange boundaries we haven't seen before. Um, and it feels kind of industrial at the same time, even though it's it, there's a lot of natural components to it, like the violet. Um, the pine, you know, there, there, there's a lot of outdoorsy elements to this. Yeah. It, uh, At the same it time, it, there is this feeling of industrialization here. Yeah, it's proudly synthetic. I think I, I, what I said in my review, uh, it's proudly synthetic almost. <laughs> Probably like the aldehydes yeah. and the musk. Almost like a garage, you know, garage perfume, like um, Comme de Garçon or even Le Labo, you know, that style. Do you see? Yeah, it has those aspects uh, to some extent, yeah. Yeah. Very pushy. It is pushy. It, it, is, it is pushing boundaries, you know, pushing territories we haven't seen before. I don't think too many too many brands will go there either. Yeah, I think it, it it's it's been quite some time. I think it came out in two thousand seven. I think so. For that time, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else was out there in the market after the uh, off the top of my head, but I think it's um, at the time it must have been like really weird uh, smelling this and. Uh, uh, especially uh, after the, you know, their heavy hitters. Uh, yeah, it must have been weird, I think. And it, they, they always go to the masks, right? So that, that's what that's another thing I found interesting. So whenever, you know, they, they collaborate, right? Uh, Roussel and Maul, they always go to the masks and synthetics, right? That also I found, you know, a bit intriguing. I mean, why they go there i mean of course first mask ravager so of, of course yeah mask ravager is not necessarily synthetic but it is synthetic mask at the end of the day um yeah. and then you had this one and uh, then you have anchor gym which is again a very synthetic uh, molecular kind of a fragrance um yeah i would be interested to see if at all they do another one will it again be a take on another synthetic theme uh be interested to to see that yeah Seems that they um, they really go to that uh, synthetic uh, um, theory and uh, you know try to experiment on new synthetics uh, when they come. Yeah, it feels like Roussel loves to experiment, doesn't he? He loves to go into new directions instead of um, you know reading old books. You know, that's what it feels like with both Uncut Gem and this. Yeah, that uh, that's something also. I think he was really like pushing out a lot of perfumes at the time in two thousand seven. So, um, and I think Lelabo, for instance, they just asked for another mask from him. Uh, so I think he kind of embraced that. Uh, well, yeah, he did the mask for Lelab the labdenum. Yeah, labdenum eighteen, I think it's called. That's right. Um, and uh, I think he kind of embraced that, you know, just giving his fans what they want. Almost some his, uh, some people but... prefer that to Musk Ravageur. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I think there was another Italian house. They had some Merhe base. I, I think that's what it was called. Uh, I don't remember the name. That's also another take on Musk Ravageur, from what I understood. Maurice Roussel made the only good Bond number nine for according to Rich. Which one was that? Which one did um he make? Is it New Harlem? The thing. Did he make New Harlem? No. Damn. I'm sure. Yeah, it was one of those sweet uh, lavender perfumes. I had a bottle of um New Harlem. I didn't I didn't realize he made that. <clears throat> but he made insolence, and even insolence is pretty spectacular. You know, we have big vibe. It feels like it's something new. Like he he goes into new territory. You know, I don't think we've seen uh, in, insolence. 
Insolence doesn't really remind me of anything else either. I think that was his last like like great fragrance from from Musel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think he has really knocked it out of the park since then. At least from what I've smelled. Hmm. It's interesting. I think he made for another brand. I think what? No. Um, it was named after. Um, was, it's not Kayali, but uh, you know what there was this hex hexagonal capped bottles. I don't remember the, Kajal. Kajal, I think is the, is the name of the Kajal. Brand. Kajal, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think they have stars for caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they had some. I mean, I think all of them were made by by Russell, if I if I remember. Um, they had some interesting scents, but yeah, I think that was his last like great, great fragrance uh, for Gilma. Bobby's asking if um, you, so you obtained the rest of the desert gems since last year, eh? A, a, a. Yeah, I have. Bobby's Canadian, or he's been watching me too long. <laughs> yeah, I've attained all four. Um, I think the, I think night was the last one I got. In fact, um, I was still questioning that whether I should. I mean, I just found it uh, in the dry down, especially. I found it a little too similar to to Portrait of a Lady. In fact, um, Dawn well, I I really like. I, again, I don't know why it gets the hate. Dawn I think it's brilliant. The the incense, the wood, the olivanum. I think it's brilliant. Uh, Dawn. Um, do you see? Um, do you see Dawn also from Portrait of a Lady? Um, not too much, really. Uh, maybe it has some overlapping themes. Uh, probably yes. Plus, they are all from IFF, so that's there. Maybe some material overlap, I imagine. Um, what about Prada? Yeah. Uh, promise, I any portrait of a lady for you? No, promise. I think it's uh, it's big on that Cipriol uh, component. I think it's uh, it's its own thing. In fact, yeah. The patchouli, maybe yeah, patchouli sandalwood components. Uh, maybe there are some similarities there. It's I thought I got account. some portrait from from Promise. Okay, I didn't get any whatsoever. I think it's just overwhelmingly Cipriol. and uh, maybe the rose as well. Yeah, I know that you know that you say. Uh, I think they use Turkish the same, maybe possibly the same Turkish rose. Um, could be. Uh, are some aroma chemicals right? I mean, you're not perfumer, so I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, maybe some common aroma chemicals that gives it that uh, similarity is possibly. How would you, how would you rank the desert gems from your favorite? Um, I'd say dawn dawn is my number one probably. Dawn, yeah, is the one you wear the most? Yeah, yeah, I wear that one the most as well. Dawn is great. Yeah, it's not too bold, right? I mean, it, it is persistent, but it's not too much to handle. Right? It's not as much as the night. Yeah, you don't want to lay down and take a rest after wearing it, right? So, <laughs> I think it's more pretty than the night, too. It's more beautiful. Yeah. I, the feel night, I find the night more outrageous, mm. but the dawn more beautiful. Dawn yeah, is it's... quieter and softer, but it's more beautiful. Yeah, it makes sense. It has that, again, that the idea that he captured that morning uh, that, that I find it, it's really it's really brilliant there. Um, then it would be the the moon, uh, then the night, and the fourth will be the I think it's called not the promise but promise yeah. So dawn, the moon, the night, and promise. Yeah. Yeah. Does that ever change? Um, not since, yeah, since I've thought about it. 
But, uh, I don't think pro promise, yeah, promise I'm not big on, so I don't see it, uh, you know, kind of appealing more to me. Um, Night, yeah, night that association with portrait of lady, you know, I've just worn portrait of lady too much, so I'm unable to kind of disassociate it uh, from a night, from the night. Um, yeah, between the night and the moon, maybe they could uh, switch a bit, but yeah, mostly I think it, I don't see that changing much. <laughs> they both do the, they both do the same thing, but very differently. Rose patchouli oud, but very very differently they show up. Yeah. The, uh, Carl, Carl says I think in the Frederick Mall interview with the perfumers, Maurice Roussel introduced himself as just a guy, after the rest <laughs> of the legendary perfumers introduced themselves. So he was discredited. Did, did he feel less than compared to the other guys? Is that what you're saying? I guess he doesn't hold himself as in the same position as the other perfumers. Yeah, I think he almost dosed off once. <laughs> <It> <laughs> that seems like the type yeah. that loses interest really quickly, eh? Yeah, I think that host was even like, in the pictures with Frederick Mall <laughs> and the promotional material. He just looks so bored. Like, <laughs> can we get this over with? Do I have to be here? What's going on? You know, that's yeah. that's the image I get. Even the host, uh, the lady was like, Monsieur Roussel, on est toujours là. I think she was calling him and he almost dosed off in the interview. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. So, what should we wear tomorrow? What what what, should, what what direction should we go now? Yeah, I think someone said uh, Noir Peace, maybe. Noir Peace, I heard. Yeah, they were clamoring for Noir Peace yesterday. What do you? What does the chat say? What should we do tomorrow? What I direction? Carl Flower. We've done Carl and Flower already. Oh yeah, done we've done Carl. We haven't done any of the Uds. and um, we haven't. Maybe a floral or an oud. We can do another green perfume. Did you do synthetic jungle? Yeah, you want to do synthetic jungle tomorrow? Anybody? We got we got some saying the moon. A spaced out saying the moon. Rizard saying geranium. Carnal flower has that power. Carnal flower has boner power for sure. If you if Carnal flower don't give you a boner, bro, it's game over for you. Okay, <laughs> just cut it off, get rid of it. You don't need it. But Carnal flower, it will wake it up from the dead. You don't need any pills. Just get some Carnal flower. Uh, that's one of those perfumes. Even if you if you don't like it, um, uh, not you particularly, but even the people who don't like it, right? So it feels like a lot of effort has gone into it for some for some reason. That's how I, I into creating it. it. Yeah, even in a movie, right? When you you may not like the movie, but you see that they have put a lot of effort into yeah the, the work. It's has been gorgeous. Done. Yeah, that's how I feel about Cotton Flower. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Um, anyone else? Any other requests? So we've done Heaven Can Wait, which was brilliant. We've done music for a while. Oh, what do you what, tell us what you think about music for a while? I know you love it. I know you love it just as much as I do, but let's talk about it. Um yeah, music for a while, I think it I think it. When you first, uh, I think at least when I first smelled it, I felt like it was an accident, really. Like, I was like, did someone put another uh, unwanted note in here, like pineapple with the lavender? I mean, was it a mistake? That That's how I felt initially. Um, 
it, it, it really feels like they shouldn't go together, right? They shouldn't work together. That, that's how it feels when, at least when I smell it for the first time. It was too sweet and um, I think I even tested it during the summer, so it was just too much for me. Um, but then you, way. yeah, but then you, you wear it and, you know, the, 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 the screechy, the, the sort of sweetness that seems to kind of go away after, uh, after some time. Um, and it becomes more of this almost aromatic amber. Um, it has, it's not a fougere per se, but it's almost like an amber fougere, kind of a hybrid scent, like fruity amber fougere. Totally. Yeah. The lavender is brilliant, like you said. It, it's textured. It's sort of this almost herbal, uh, almost rosemary kind of lavender that I that I really enjoy. Scratchy. Yeah. That, that so, that's again that, I don't understand why people don't do more, more fougere, like modern interpretation of fougere. Um, there are not many. I mean, I have been searching myself. I, I don't see many. Maybe boy and maybe. Uh, the latest Fuja Royal, but uh, not many Fujas out there. So, um, and uh, yeah, the I think the patchouli, the patchouli also, I think is is really saving it from becoming completely uh, a Joanna sweet bomb. Um, yeah, and again, that's another thing I find. Quite unique, actually. I don't think it's it's again mass appealing at all. Um, it's 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 sweet, but it's bombastic. Yeah, it's very bombastic. Hey, it's almost like you get two people who don't want to, you know, like be together and made them be together kind of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> you force them together, and there's no yeah. way out. And they are and they are working together for uh, a bigger reason, bigger cause. <laughs> I tell you what, though, it's super fun to wear. That's how I feel when I wear this. Yeah, it has I, a sense like, of humor. I enjoy myself. Yeah, exactly. This perfume lifts my spirits. It's not too serious. It's not too dark. And no, it's somber. not. It's not like Mitsuko. It's not like Little Blue or Number Five. It's not like any of those, right? It's way more funner. Those perfumes aren't fun. Those those are sad perfumes, right? That's why we love them because they're sad perfumes. This is the opposite. This is I don't know. There's just something sunny about this. It's that. It's the lavender sun sunshine and lavender, sunshine and bubble gum. Like who as a kid didn't love chewing bubble gum or eating sticky fruit. I also find it funny that they, I think, a bunch of perfumes that they released, uh, the marketing really pushes that it's for women, but at the end, it seems like it's the guys who are enjoying it. The guys were enjoying this? Yeah, music for a while was really pushed as a rave gauche uh, woman in Paris. That's kind of the brief that it got. Right, right, with but the fur coat. Yeah, but it's the guys who are enjoying it. Similar. Similarly, Rose Cuir, or Rose Mistral, I think it's, it is the more apt name for that. Um, that was a grand femina is what Jean-Claude Elena was selling. And that, again, seems to be more appealing to guys. Mascravager itself, I think, was made for women in the first place. And, uh, now it's the bros and the guys who are enjoying it. <laughs> I, love, I love the tension in this perfume, the construction. The, you know the base the foundation the architecture it's it's really it's grand it it, it has a, a feeling of Cora Mandel to it I, yeah, I, I get amber, it. yeah. That, that patchouli and amber yeah The sparkle. But I think it's it's probably his maybe sweetest uh, perfume. I think um, lipstick rose comes to mind, but I think it is his sweetest fragrance. Hmm. The most bubble gummy, 
It's sticky. It's definitely sticky. Is it the sweetest one? Folks, you might be. You might be right. You might be right. Like he 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 uses a lot of fruity notes, especially in the last bunch of releases. He like overdosed in fruitiness. But yeah. music for a while is is fruity and then caramel on top of that and then bubblegum <laughs> on top of that. You know, it's not just yeah. fruity. Normally, if we get any sweetness in the Frederick Malt, it'll be a big fruit note. You know, he loves those um black mm. currants, the blackberries, uh that type of stuff, right? Yeah, I but, think that's what it gives it that sort of modernity uh, to some extent because I think they cut, they kind of finished the fragrance at first and then they, they thought it was just a boring amber fougere without the pineapple the fruity notes. It was just like another uh, kind of dismissible. Just, yeah, just another something, something, right? Yeah. And putting that kind of shakes up everything and, you know, you're like, whoa. What's this? <laughs> and I, I was I, I was almost doing your your anti-use thing with it for a while. You know, I used to go and smell. What the hell is this? And who put sweet in the lavender? And I was like, uh, I mean, it's like an accident. This is what I felt in the beginning. I mean, no one in their uh, conscious mind decided to mix this like that. <laughs> That's what I was th I was thinking. Um, but yeah, then then you spend time with it. You you wear it on skin. And, know in the right conditions and yeah it really really shows up the true colors let's say top 10 frederick mall music for a while yeah i think so yeah, yeah. top five uh no I, for not for me at least yeah <laughs> no no i wouldn't say no do you ha do you have an absolute favorite just one yeah uh, no, I, it's very difficult for me. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I can't. I can't make up my. It's mind. tough, isn't it? Yeah, and it's. It's just that he. It's also another reason I think I didn't mention it's the consistency, right? So, I don't think many houses have been this consistent uh, from what I've seen. You know, they they do some good releases and then they kind of fall off, or they do one good uh, once in a while. But you know, he, here there's been like consistent, right? So, you know, one release after another. Yeah, of course, um, maybe Anchor Gym, the recent times, maybe is one of the more uh, less acclaimed. But the rest, I think, even after, you know, Estee Lauder or whatever, I think they have been consistent uh, with their releases. So, um, yeah, that's why it makes it difficult to really pinpoint, you know, top five or top 10 and so on. It's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. Even the next one seems to be a sort of a lighthearted, uh, fun fragrance. The the Acme Studios one. Hey, I'm excited for it. You know, doesn't doesn't matter. I have a feeling it's going to be a big blocky perfume. Looking at the like, I just looked at the Acme clothes yesterday really quickly. They look big and blocky. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of material there. It's round, you know the 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 corners are round, but the the pieces themselves are big and blocky. So yeah, I'm curious. I really like that idea. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they'll incorporate uh, any of the shapes into the perfume, the shapes of the clothing, the style, the cuts. It's not a person, which I find a bit uh, different from before. Because you know the first two in the what they call as the portraits collection, it was one individual, right? So it was Dries van Norton. Dries, yeah. Yeah, it was Albert Albas. Uh, it was like one person. Um, but the perfumes, it, they weren't inspired by. They weren't supposed to mimic these people. I th I think that it was a collaboration where they they created the perfumes together, and Dries, the, the inspiration of that was um a coffee shop during during a rainy day mm. and, and going in and, and sitting down and having milk and tea and biscuits or something 
um, yeah. coming off the road on, on a wet, rainy day. That's what Dries had wanted. Where is he from? The Netherlands? Belgium. Belgium. Um, and muse or superstitious superstitious is something that i i remember seeing that dominique had started working on way before yeah. albert had even come into the picture yeah that was pitched to dries van norton from what i read in the in the book the 20th anniversary yeah. book and uh, i th i think they also mentioned that there are part of the personality of those people in there like um I think Dries, what he mentioned was, you know, Dries, visually he's very simple. Like he, he himself is just very simple. You know, he's always in white and black or something like that. But his colors are, you know, very eclectic, you know, very bright and uh, um, sort of very opulent kind of pieces. And he was like, so we take a plain uh, background of sandalwood and we added colors in it, just like, um, you know, like a piece of life of Dries. That's what he mentioned. And with Albert Albas, I think it was, uh, you know, he has some superstitions that he would cut the cloths in a certain way. He would cut the first piece at a certain time in the morning. He would wear his shoes in a certain way, you know, left first and right first, something like that. And Frederick Moll also had some superstitions, apparently, the way he dips his uh, sense strips in the testing uh, flacon or whatever. Um, that empty stomach smelling superstition. All those kind of inspirations were kind of put into that idea, I think, uh, for superstitious. So here, I, I, yeah, I'm just curious because we don't know the perfumer yet. And uh, it just says studios instead of, uh, I don't know, a person working on that studio. Uh, it's just acne studios. So uh, that I find a bit strange. So we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to give us all the information we need to know. And then it all makes sense when he does, right? Yeah, eventually when it comes to it. Yeah. He does a great job of telling a story with all of his releases. Yeah. Just that enough sufficient it is not going into chemistry and you know speaking about fancy ingredients and all. Just a little peek that gets you curious. That that also something I you know I find uh, that short blurb, you know, in the back of their boxes and so on. There's this sufficient information to get you excited without going deep into the into the, chemistry. Into the geeky stuff yeah geeky stuff yeah yeah and uh, and there is a bit of a snobbery right there is a bit of elitist elitist art attitude in there you know like french parisian attitude that's there also without totally. going full on snobby <laughs> that totally. also yeah totally i mean it, it exudes he exudes that in his interviews yeah right and that's why, like, like Rose Queer, like, uh, that, that, that could be an example that was named Rose Mistral. Mistral, I don't think most people would even know what it is. So, uh, Mistral is a particular, um, a wind current that's in the south of France. And, um, they thought that that was the inspiration to have this sort of windy geranium rose. That was the inspiration. It was named Rose Mistral. And uh, maybe I don't know the uh, naming uh, legal issues or marketing issues or whatever they changed it to rose equia, and that's why most people were expecting some rose leather, and they were disappointed. Um, that's why I feel that that sort of very French attitude, that uh, naming whatever, and uh, um, all these aspects are you know very typically you know French, bit of that snobby elitist attitude that also I find uh, yeah a bit intriguing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like the names. I like the names. Um, uh, I'm not crazy about names like Rose and Queer. Hmm. I, I'm more, I, I like more of the poetic names. Yeah. You know, like most. Yeah, I would have liked, or... I would have liked if it was left as Rose Mistral, you know, that would have made yeah, people absolutely. curious. Yeah, to look it up and understand what it is, you know. And, uh, absolutely. Yeah the storytelling is this true pradeep or says i love parisians they leave you the fuck alone when you're walking down the street <laughs> yeah they don't even make eye contact uh, most of the times yeah. i imagine it's like all big cities yeah yeah people are in a rush and they have no time 
what's downtown Paris like? Uh, yeah, mostly tourists. Um, tourists busy. Uh, yeah, it's it's busy, hectic. Um, I usually go out a bit late, you know, like at night or early in the morning. That's when you really get to, you know, enjoy everything like in peace. Uh, you don't have lots of people and noise. And, and so how on. close are you to the center? I'm actually very far. I have to go um, like forty-five minutes uh, to get to the, the center of the city. Um, by train? Yeah, by train, uh, by metro, or by car. It takes some time, actually. You can't live there. It's just uh, just too much. It's too expensive, um, and uh, too hectic to to live at the center of the city. So, how often do you go in? Um, I go for work, obviously. Um, I'm actually oh, every day. Yeah, I'm actually li living between two cities at the moment. So I'm even thinking of uh, moving out of Paris. In fact, right now, yeah. Um, yeah, I go for work every day. I mean, now you can work at home a couple of days a week. Uh, so I go down there like three days a week. Um, it's in La Défense, uh, or is uh, La Défense is that uh, economic district in, in Paris? You know, like. Uh, like Wall Street kind of a thing in in Paris, uh, where you have a grand, uh, the big arch, and you have all those towers, tall buildings, and so on. Um, yeah. Yeah, but now it's um, especially if you don't have a car or something, it's a bit hectic there. Yeah. No, every week you have some sort of uh, issues, some. Uh, metro strikes and, and all that you know people come out to the streets and you know, there's violence and <laughs> sirens and fire and so on so <laughs> are the farmers protesting out there yeah that's why i even had to camp out in in leo uh farmers they took their tractors and vehicles and, and so on and they drove all the way uh 16 20 hours to to come to paris to protest and uh, they even blocked the highways for uh for quite some time what what are they demanding what what are, what are they protesting for i think the main is the the profit share um they are they feel that they are they are being kind of back in it uh the large majority of the share goes to you know your supermarkets yeah the grocery market. store makes more than the farmers exactly i think that's what they are concerned about why are farmers starving and grocery stores are 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 making the biggest profits ever. Yeah, I think that's the main uh, issue that they have. Plus taxes also. Uh, they are being heavily taxed and uh, they're making very little out of it, it seems so, yeah. And it's, every, uh, it's everybody's problem though, I imagine. Everybody's yeah. problem. And you have automation also coming through like, you know, like now they have machines that can make you baguette and, and so on. So they are against that sort of thing also. They want to keep the artisanal uh, craft, keep keep going. Oris lived in Paris off Rue, Rue something, it doesn't matter, but yeah. I, I don't know. I don't want to butcher that any more than I have to. So, all right, let's pick. Let's let's pick something to wear tomorrow. Um, we did vetiver. We did. We didn't do cologne indelible yet. That's a possibility. A geranium. Didn't do geranium. How do you feel about geranium? Oh, I really like it. Yeah, for especially for the summer. Yeah, I think I, I kind of dismissed it at first and. Uh, really liked it only after wearing it in the heat so it really does a lot in the heat it's probably better in the heat too isn't it yeah yeah i really like geranium and it took me some time to kind of keep it out of the association of uh, the toothpaste <laughs> smell as well <laughs> it's amazing dominique has this way of overdosing you know his perfumes with whatever ingredient it is here it's geranium but 
everything is done so brilliantly, eh? Yeah, he has this um, particular way of yeah meticulous way of doing it. So carnal flower is overdosed in that tube rose. This is overdosed. It's like he has he has his signature, this structure. You know, he has a very a set way of doing things. Especially yeah, when he works with Frederick Moll. And it's interesting to see the the growth of that scent profile, right? So take a mouthwash, and that became Jeremy Monsieur, and then you have Portrait of a Lady from this one. Then from Portrait of a Lady, you have The Night. So uh, Promise, that, yeah. Yeah, so that itself is, uh, you know, that kind of DNA kind of going through, that itself is a nice story, I think. And I think he even, he even joked somewhere that... Uh, you know, my my father's mouthwash has become my wife's signature scent, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of his signatures too. Yeah, the geranium. A yeah, he likes he likes geranium and vetiver extraordinaire the the most. I think out of his uh, out of his scents, he he wears them the most. I think. I think they're two two of the most masculine scents of of his collection. Yeah, very gentlemanly. Very somewhat maybe even obviously masculine kind of thing. So yeah, charming, very charming yeah, perfume. Smart and suave. Yeah, very much all of that. Do the night. The night is going to oh. be a special one. Do the night. Well, we'll have to do the night. Eventually, will come time to do the night. Pradeep is an excellent live stream guest. Thank you. I hope my accent is not too strong. <laughs> I haven't even noticed. I haven't even noticed. <laughs> what, so, do you wear Frederick Mall every day? Ah, oh, no, no, no. That's that's just too much. No, <laughs> no. There it are other things much, I enjoy. Right? It yeah. is. I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that you said that because as much as I love his perfumes and they're beautiful, sometimes yeah. they are too much, you know? Exactly. Plus, yeah. I'm not a brand. That's not a bad thing it. either. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm looking for something softer or lighter. I, yeah. I, I, oh, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? I don't know. Um, it was quite mild today. I was, you know, it was, it was nice enough to be able to sit outside under a tree for half an hour. So it was tolerable. Um, we'll pick. Maybe I'll surprise you guys. I, I might be good. I might be back tomorrow. I might be back tomorrow. I have no attachments tomorrow. I am a free man all weekend. So maybe we'll do some. Another some mall? Or? What's that? Another mall? Yeah, we'll do another Frederick Mall. We'll do another Frederick Mall. Do so Bryn, Bryn the religious. <laughs> Bryn? No, no, it's. I was joking because Rich mentions that scent and he says it's religious <laughs> instead of reglis. <laughs> oh, please. Apparently, they're discontinuing that. Bryn, Paprika Brazil, and Muguet. And they're already gone. I don't see them here anymore. Even Dante brought it's not it's out of stock on the Frederick Mull website. I had a look. It says out of stock. Very interesting. Very big, very beautiful perfume. However, this is not it's not my perfume. You know, it is for somebody. It's not it's not my favorite. And I'll reach for it again from time to time just to experience it and, and live with it. But I might be back. Yeah. But this one's going to fall on the lower end of the spectrum for me. Okay. And I'm okay with that, you know, because there's so many others that I do love. Mm. But I'm keeping a list. I'm keeping a list of preference and an order. 
What do you think of the oud, uh, the Hermes oud that's coming? I'm excited to smell it. I'm excited to try it. I don't know what to expect, though. I imagine I'm going to like it. Hey, it's very nice, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's you've tried pleasant. it? Yeah, you've tried it, right? Yeah, yeah, I've tried it. I even made a video, I think, about it. Yeah, so it's um, it's very Amazons. So it is obvious. So it is a rosewood. So they are not trying to reinvent anything there. Um, but it, but it's very pleasant. Yeah, it has this rose water kind of a thing uh, going on. Bottle ready? Uh, no, I, I don't think I would buy a bottle. No. Really? I think it would be a if I didn't have any designer rose oats, I think I would definitely. Um, Does now it, what's, I think, what's yeah. the closest rose oud that you would compare it to? Um, may, if maybe it, oud silk mood from from MFK. Ooh, it has that sort of sweetness to it? Yeah, it, it but but it doesn't stay sweet like the the MFK. It. Uh, I feel like it has some violets in the opening, but that that's what gives that sweetness. But silk mood has violets. Yeah, in the in the dry down uh, of this Hermes, it becomes more rose, like soft rose uh, kind of a scent. Um, yeah, I, I think it, people might even say it's feminine. It becomes really a rose scent in the in the, in the dry down. Yeah. Do you prefer it to violet voilinka? Um uh, no, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to test it again. Good. Yeah, maybe it's because of the perfume. Hey, what were you wearing, Rich? <laughs> Scrub the kuros off. <laughs> we are sauvage. <laughs> sauvage. Also, watch at least. Which one will fall under the least favorites? Uh, you'll have to stick around. You'll have to wait and see. Uh, he says Narciso for him. They love it. Any other favorite violets since we're on the topic of violets with Dante Bra? Um, I mean, Violet Volinka is a, a good topic right there. Yeah. How about, how about it? How did you feel about that? I I liked it, but I think I felt it was a bit too, uh, too sweet. Um, and... Um, I think it it lost my interest with um, you know during the wearing like like after a few hours I think I kind of lost interest. The fruitiness. Yeah, I think it was becoming a bit more monotonous. I think in the in the dry down. Um, the leather part I I really liked um, that Vilinka leather. I think that was uh, that was really nice. Um, Plus, again, yeah, this may be subconscious, but you know, when you go for leather, you know, give, give me a leather. <laughs> so that that maybe that might have played into it as well. I think. <laughs> so you prefer queer orange? I prefer yellow. I adore, adore yellow. I think it's brilliant. I think. Uh, you prefer? I think. Do you prefer yellow to queer orange? Uh, that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> For now, I would say they are, for me at least, they are on kind of the same same level. Similar, but but I think but I think a cuir d'ange, and a gallop built on cuir d'ange, I feel in, in some ways. So, um, without cuir d'ange, there wouldn't be gallop, I think. So in that way, maybe cuir d'ange is is better. Um, but when you kind of ignore that in the equation, I think for me they are both. Uh, I Loves think they're, brilliant. they're yeah. both brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Both are brilliant. 
Yet Not Dead says favorite Violet is Queer Canage, and I'm I'm kind of struggling to remember the Violet and Queer Canage. Violet and Queer Canage. I think Jersey has a shadows Jersey that has a Violet. No, I think sweet uh, sweet waters. Jersey. Does Jersey have Violet? Lavender. Tonka bean. I think so. It has sweet uh, sweetness to it. I should see. Oh, the duck is upset. Yeah, he's not feeling. He's not feeling it. Rich, you know, there's there's billions of fish in the sea, bro. She wasn't the one. It's okay. Buy a new perfume and and go out there and try again. I thought he was supposed to be at a hospital. What is he doing at the cafe? <laughs> oh, she was talking to another punter. Fuming. <laughs> it happens. It happens, man. It's a good lesson. Anyway, all right, two hours in. Pradeep, it is um, all right. five. It's it's past five AM here. I am I am I am ready to hit the hay, man. I am ready to go. But I, think, I think we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know how you're staying up late every day. I, mean, I hope yeah. it's not taking a toll on your health. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get I get good sleep, but this is probably the only way I get um good sleep, but it's okay. We'll be back tomorrow, and I'll surprise you. I don't know what I'm going to wear, but I'll I'll surprise you, and I'm we'll see you guys. See. All right. It was a. Hey, I've dropped the link to your channel. Everyone, go and subscribe to um. Sent Zatura. Here's the link one more time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're too kind. As the Thank says. you, Pradeep, for coming <laughs> on and and sharing your time with us and your knowledge and your expertise it was great getting thanks, to thanks, know you Eugene. thank, thank you buddy me. all right guys i hope everybody has a great friday morning wherever you are in the world hope the sun shines on you and enjoy your day and we'll see you in about 23 hours guys have a wonderful right. day talk thank to you thank you bye bye everyone bye